Well, this is going to go through taking uh, DT1000, the Ethernet IP version from SICK, and setting it up inside SOPUS, changing the IP address, and um, setting it up with a PLC. So, the one that I have here is uh, 110074, the Ethernet IP version. You scroll down to the bottom, you can see here on connection one, right here is an 8-pin connector. So, only thing I have wired is power, which uh, pin 2 is hot and pin 7 is not, which is neutral. Um, then I've got uh, three other ports. Two of them are Ethernet IP ports and one of them is an Ethernet port for configuration. So, see Ethernet IP number 2, Ethernet IP number 3, and Ethernet is number 4. So, 4 is how we'll configure it with SOAP. So, now I've already got that hooked up. The default IP address, my IP address on my computer is 192.168.1.29, I believe. Um, but the Ethernet IP address of the sensor is going to be um, on a different subnet, um, which would be 192.168.100.237. So, I'll go ahead and let SOPUS reach out and find the sensor, um, which you see here. And I'll go into the sensor and um, go ahead and change that IP address. I don't have to change it on my computer. I can do auto. I can change that third octet. I'll just do auto and let it find itself. So that will be changing the IP address of the Ethernet port, but not the Ethernet IP ports. We'll go in to SOPUS and we'll reconfigure that ourselves. While I'm doing that, um, I'll show you exactly where the EDS file is because we'll need that. So you come to Downloads um, and then Software. And you come down here and grab the EDS file. Um, download that, which you see I've already done here. Um, and extracted that data so I can put it in my network configurator. Now I'll just go online with the device. I don't want to change the passwords. So what we'll do here is if you need the password, you can just come back to the manual and you type in password. And it'll give you the three different levels of passwords where you can change parameters, run firmware updates. All we're going to need to do is change parameters. So we'll go in as a client. And we'll come down here where it says operator. I'll click on it. And I'll authorize client and type in client on lowercase. And you can see here I'm set up with authorized client. Income communication, Ethernet IP. And then I'll put that on 192, 192.168.1.17. And I'll keep the subnet mass at 255, 255, 255. And we'll click apply. Download to the device and we'll save permanently. I'll close out of it. And I'll go offline with the device. Now, just to verify that it has taken those parameters, I'll unplug it, wait the 10 seconds for everything to cool down and pull the reset. Then I'll put the power back to it. Once it's found the device, I'll just drag that back over. And it still says it has a conflict in IP because I changed it earlier. I'll just do a research so I can pick it up with that, that new IP address that we just set on the Ethernet port.
while it's loading, I don't think I showed where the manual is. The manual will be under downloads and then literature and then here operating instruction. That's the same manual that I'm using here. So now that I found it, move that over. We'll go verify this 192.168.1.17. And now we see that it has still changed, uh, kept that IP address. So that's good. So I'll take the device offline. Well, let's go back here. We have something to reference off of when we put it into the PLC. Take it offline. I'll take my Ethernet port and plug it into um, Ethernet cable and plug it into port two, which is one of the two Ethernet IP ports or link one. And I'll open up Network Configurator. I've already installed my ADS file, so I don't have to do that. And I'll connect to the network over USB. And I'll upload. that is uploading um, we'll look and kind of see what our, our instance IDs and stuff like that's going to look like uh, all the data coming in two input exclusive owner two put input assemblies so looks like input assembly instant ID position so here's the input I can do one and get position which would be four bytes or I can get statuses I'll probably just go with the four bytes and then the four bytes of output data because I'll probably be exclusive owners what I'll set it up as Okay, so now it sees the DT1000, and I'll just drop that down, and we'll drill down into it, and it looks like I've got that one that we were talking about in the 100, I'll just do the four bytes. We're going to do exclusive owner with position only, so I'll need a tag with four bytes of data. And I'll just try to find something that is unused register so 1715 four bytes of input we'll close that okay register and then I've got those four so I'll do the next one at 1719 and how many bytes was that four bytes as well Register, close, OK, register the tag. And complete the mapping. All of that looks good. And I want to take snipping tool just so I remember exactly where the data is going and looks like I've got an error there I'll 
Let's make that D. The lowercase, so still modify it. Now everything looks better. Now I'll just download it to the network. And 17 is up and running. Now I've got him a PLC. All right, so then we'll come over here to memory, and I'll go to the D register, and we'll go to the same one that we just saw, which was D1715. And we'll put it in monitor mode. Now I can see I actively have data changing, but what is that data? So before we said just looking at the distance of it from here looking up and this place is 1.9 and we were at 1.86 so now I can come here to my watch table and type in D1715 you see I've got it there as I move it and I start pointing to different spots um, that number increases and so that's how you take the DT1000 and throw it in the PLC and map it over Ethernet IP. Hope this helps.